spoilers and offensive content to come. We are Carlton Dave Anime Rave. We are we are the best anime review show ever. We have a consistent release schedule. We certainly don't make you wait like seven to eight months between things. That's not who we are. Frequent, consistent releases we are on here on the Carl's Day of Anime. We just finished watching episode 24 of Mobile Suit Gundam, The Witch from Mercury. Uh, it's pretty good. We're going to have to watch the other 23 episodes now just to see how it is. I kind of wish there was more. To be honest, yeah, it's uh, we did see the whole show. Um, I really like this show. What did you think of it, Dave? Uh, this has probably been the best Gundam show I've seen, and it's the least Gundam Gundam y show <laughs> there has been. Now, I will say though that I mean, I've only watched Gundam Wing and this. You haven't I, seen any other Gundam actually, show? No, I did watch a little bit of um, Gundam Seed, wasn't yeah. that impressed? No, Gundam Seed. Gundam Seed was not Dis- good. Disgusting. It had two seasons, too. It's yeah. But no, th- this show was awesome. Uh, our main characters were enjoyable. The, the fact that they were a couple was great. Yeah. And ended up a couple was great. Confirmed. I would have liked to have seen a kiss or something, but it, it, it's pretty much confirmed <laughs> with, uh, by the way, spoilers. With Miorine calling Eri her sister-in-law yeah. and whatnot, so... Yeah, I, I, I mean, that that's its whole other, <laughs> whole other thing there. The fact that, you know, Eri not only survived, but is actually in contact with both of them at all times now due to that thing they had in their back. Yeah, the and their little, little figure... <laughs> little ice, ice climber keychain. Yeah. She's in Nana now. I... I figure that's got to be some whole quantum realm thing with the, all the, the the witches breaking down into quantum elements or something. Like, well, they we, didn't explain that, and they don't need to. If we look back at the original Gundam timeline, they had new types, and new types had pseudo-magical psychic powers. And the end of Mobile Suit Gundam Char's Counterattack, a movie that a lot of people like, but that actually blows chunks... Uh, Amuro and Char dissipate into energy as well to stop a meteor that was about to crash into Earth. Oh, yeah. So this is not unheard of for Gundam. Fair enough. have some kind of mystical bullshit wrap shit up. Uh, I really enjoyed Witch from Mercury myself. For me, it has become my second favorite Gundam show uh, because G Gundam exists. G Gundam (laughs) is awesome. It is the best Gundam show ever. And... Much like G Gundam, which for Mercury is very much unlike your typical Gundam show. It still has some of the isms. The moment that fucking Miorine's father in episode zero talked about how the right to take a life belongs to the enemy soldier. I was like, that is such a Gundam line. Yeah. But that is maybe the most Gundam thing in it. It is otherwise somewhat similar to a a toned down, funny to say, kill a kill in that a lot of the a lot of the future of humanity was tied into what it was effectively a school and its council <laughs> and an upstart student or two disrupting the order and an evil mom who, well, in this case, wasn't nearly as evil as, as yeah, the it's... life fiber puppet from Kill a Kill. Well, I mean, if you want to talk about, you know, an enemy being like the life fibers. Yeah. Um, that would be the political landscape that was in, in the background of this entire show. Mm-hmm. I mean, there, there, there was the, the one group there that I was saying for the last half of the series I wanted to see dead. Yeah. The... Did, I did not get what I wanted, but at least they got their ass kicked. The one that the original Elan was working with. Three yeah. Elans <clears throat> we have in the show. Two clones, one original... None of them ended up being all that evil, though. Just kind of misunderstood. No, I, I at first I thought Suleta might not have been able to carry the show, but she quickly turned me around. She, yeah, there's definitely a depth of character to her, and how funny this depth of character being a child who needs to learn to say no to her mom is kind of the simple cornerstone, yet a relatable one. I've known people who just need to kind of stand up to their parents. Yeah, and, and this is this is. This is one of those cases, right? That's kind of a theme yeah. in this show. Like, Well, for for the, both our main characters, for Suleta and f- for Miorne. Yeah, no, they, they definitely... 
there's a stand up to your parent vibe, even with Guel. Yes. Who, after those two was definitely the next important mm-hmm. in the line. Fucking Gu- I in an alternate universe, Guel is the main character of the show. He could be. And Miorine and Suleta are like the a couple who are his supporting actors. Yeah. That's not to take away from Suleta and Miorine. Uh, I'm just saying that Guel was maybe my favorite character in the show because he's got that Zuko vibe. Yes. I am a sucker for a good Zuko. For a good Zuko or Katra redemption arc that puts them back on the side of the on the side of angels, you know? Well, and if they did a sequel series, that could be exactly what happens. I don't know if Guel would be if uh, uh, I would like that, but typically a Gundam sequel series will involve a new main character, and they're acting kind of in the aftermath of yeah. what happened in the last series. So, and that like, would that would work perfectly. I, I'll say right now, I don't want to see a sequel series to this. We've wiped out all the Gundams, literally. They yet, all turned into rainbow yet, sparkles. Yes, they're going to. They're still going to have lots of politics in the background. There's still going to be hardships, even with w- everything that um, they did for the final episode with giving all the Benner- Benerix groups um, assets and everything else to Earth and everything else. But <sighs> there's just not enough angst, I think, to justify a second season. The only hook I could see is if the new main character was some co- sort of other contingency that Proxima Mercury had and that they become the main character. But I don't, I, I'm don't. i still not sure how you carry a series. But then again, the problems on Earth are not resolved. No, no, they're and not. And they're still, they even said at the end that Spatians are going to just steal back what was given to Earth anyway. So there is still work to be done. There which is. Which means there's still a backdrop for a story. Uh, I'm not saying we need this. Yeah. I'm just saying that if if it got announced that there was a, a Witch for Mercury sequel in the works, I would not be terribly worried. No, I, I would be a little bit worried, but, I mean, they proved they could pull it off, uh-huh. the writers here. Remember how early I picked up on the whole clone aspect, thanks you, to the ending? You figured out that Suleta was a clone very early. I kind of had a feeling, based off the intro, that Aerie was inside Ariel. Yeah. But uh, I didn't overtly say it, because I was hedging my bets that maybe one of my cockamamie predictions wasn't going to be true. <laughs> then again, I also had the cockamamie prediction that Aerie died, and that Proxima was going to go crazy, but uh, it, that didn't happen either. So uh, She managed to save the entire family, in this case. Well, Suleta was always going to try. Oh, yeah. Her whole thing was that, after all the hurt that was visited her way after she realized that it it after she realized the root cause of it she instead swallowed her pride and attempted to help everyone else right yeah and yeah, no that's a uh, family's a big theme of this show as well right like uh Guel needing to make up for, w- with his brother and his the accidental killing of his father needing to Guel had to grow a ton. Mjorn had to grow a ton. Suleta had to grow a ton. But all the characters were likable. I, I like Choo Choo. I like her hair. Even the even the even, even even the fucking who I like to call the the school bitches who were just so mean to the the Earthian crew. Yeah. Even they had like you know more depth to them than we thought. What about that episode where a bunch of people at the school just died? Oh my god! The, the, the terrorist attack on that. Yeah. That was horrifying. Like, body bags and shit. Like, capturing that school shooter vibe that yeah. happens all too often on this continent. And that was exactly it. It captured that perfectly with just, you know, them having to go through the rubble and finding all their, their schoolmates in in that those conditions. Just, ugh. It, it makes it a lot more personal than in previous Gundam shows where, you know, the heroes or the protagonists really for, for Gundam um, are just mowing down hordes of enemy soldiers and you just kind of forget that, you know, these are soldiers not, you know, just mech suits being piloted by AI kind of thing. Yeah, they're not you, drones. You forget that during other Gundam shows and here, 
they kept it personal. And that was a good way to do it. No, there's a lot of... Uh, we never had that disconnect with the pilots that we sometimes do in a mech show. Mm -hmm. Like, we always got into the headspace of uh, who was piloting things. Everything from Guell being worried about getting into a Gundam again because of what happened to his father, to uh, all the range of emotions Suleta had visited upon her. Oh, wow. By people yeah. who were trying to just do what they thought was best for her, but ended up hurting her an awful lot. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, when... Um, Miorne caused her to lose that duel and therefore their relationship. Uh, that was just... And then the very next episode when Suleta goes to talk to her and instead it's Proxima who basically tells Suleta that, you know, she needs to just move on because Proxima was only ever after Eri. Oh man, that was a one-two punch on Suleta. Yeah. And even... Even though they were kind of trying to, you know, give her her freedom, they did it in all the wrong ways <laughs> for Soleta. I mean, other characters that may have worked just fine, you know, breaking off stuff and giving them their freedom, that wasn't what Soleta needed. No, Not in that way. But it works out, you know, because they did that, and then who's the one who ended up needing to save them all in the mm. end? That was Soleta. Like, ultimately, everyone went to her because she's the only person who could possibly even stand the same level of pressure that Eri did, right? Yeah. Like, I do kind of wish that she had gone and blown up the laser rather than just disabling it, but they were kind of running low on time. I, it yeah, almost, they, it, we needed it, to wrap it up, people. Honestly, <laughs> it needed a 25th. Yeah, but I, then all that would have really been would have been a big... Death Star battle against the laser and its Gundams, and I'm not sure we we really needed that sort of conclusion. I, I think we needed a 25th episode so that we could have had more time for the three years later stuff. I don't know. I I, I had a I I got a I, lot of what everyone was doing. I didn't feel like I needed more of that. I just I would have liked more. We didn't need more, but it would have been nice. Because it did wrap up a little bit, little bit quickly. I I thought we had enough time there, but I I understand. It's always sad when a show you like ends because yeah. you're like, oh god damn it! Now I gotta go back to watch whatever Iskai shit Dave puts on. Hey. Damn it, motherfucker! I did like how um, wait, that was the clone of um, um that, 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 that was the surviving clone that was trying to find all the landscapes that... Um, yeah, that the the one which from Earth had drawn. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, and then the, the other clone was the one who stood up Suleta on their date. And the original Elan was the one who betrayed the uh, evil ladies. Yes. <laughs> God. A lot of characters. One thing, one way this is like other Gundam shows is that there are a lot of characters. Yeah. And God help you if you lose track of who's who. All the different groups, the members of the groups, all the politics being played. Yeah, I just there were there were characters that were almost could have been written out, and you would have lost nothing. <laughs> like um, Ryuji. Who was Roji again? He was the one with the little um, AI bo oh, ball that barely oh, ever talked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you had written him out, you would have lost nothing. Yeah, he had like three lines. Exactly. Like, it, we we also didn't really need Hot Leg Girl. Who I, I, oh, I, I, you mean I, Cecilia? I don't think her name was even mentioned once. We're looking at the my anime list for it because there were a lot of characters. I don't think I ever heard her name mentioned. I yeah. knew her as Hot Leg Girl. In episode one or two, when they introduced the entire council, her mm -hmm. name was said. Okay, now, so it was mentioned once. I mean, she did have a point, but still, you could have ridden her out, and you wouldn't have lost much of anything other than Hot Leg. No, she was she was just fan service, really. She was like, there to be a bitch. Yeah, she had a couple of times where, mm -hmm. you know, she motivated one of the main characters to do something better for themselves. But, less yeah, she she was... She, oh. she was a hostile presence, really, until everything hit the fan, and then she was like, oh, well, maybe I should do something. 
and these two, especially when the rest of the council was like Shadik, Ilan, and yeah. Guel, who are so much more important to the grand scheme of things. Or <laughs> Sabina. <laughs> like, I, I, June had way more of a presence than any of those <laughs> characters. I didn't even know her name was June. But uh, you know who it was. Yes. Look at the picture. Yeah, it's true, it's true. But, uh... uh, uh Ultimately, yeah, this uh, Witch from Mercury is a fantastic show. I recommend it to everyone. Uh, we watched the dub. The dub work was fantastic. I enjoyed that. Uh, the dub did really make me realize just how, how I guess, uh, the state of English dubs in terms of how we don't have a lot of English voice mm-hmm. dub actors. Because while their voices were familiar, I did see a few scenes of this in Japanese just out of curiosity. And not only do Suleta and Miorine not really sound like any other Japanese voice actor I've heard, they almost sounded a little strange to me. And the reason they sounded strange to me, I think, is because, yeah, there's so many more voice actors working in Japan, so there's a broader range of talent out there for characters to sound different as, you know? Yeah, Uh, it's, it's unfortunate that the anime dubbing industry, it would not be unfair to say there's under a hundred people. In fact, there's of the regulars, there's under 30. Yeah. And that's a shame because they're, very, they're a talented bunch and the, like the, the voice work in this show has been stellar. Like oh, just, fantastic. Uh, just, Even uh, the minor characters were voiced yeah. perfectly. Just f- fantastic emotion all around. And I guess we bring it up because, you know, we, 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 we tend to like dubs. We'll watch something subbed. Yeah. We have no problem reading the subtitles. It's just, uh, you know, we like our dub voice actors, yes. right? And um, it's a great dub. It's it just, feels I'm just saying, samey sometimes. Yeah, it's this show, I think, more than any in recent memory, is what made me really realize that there are so few dub voice actors right now and that the industry needs... I see why a lot of them got up in arms when... Seth Rogen said about his role as Donkey Kong in the Mario movie that he won't do voices. That's not what he does. Donkey Kong's just going to sound like him. Just such a callous thing for a a rich movie star to say when he's basically taking a role that any of these talented voice actors would have done way better. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, it's it's just a, a damn shame. You know, like yeah. that this is the state of affairs things are in. Even when we get to some of the Western shows, like like Amphibia, for example, and it has like celebrity voice work in it, and I'm like, yeah, that's great and all, and they do a fine job, but uh, how about what about dedicated? The pool? What about dedicated voice actors? And I'm not talking about actors who are also voice actors, yeah. like Mark Hamill or um, or what's Patrick his? Stewart or but, any of those. Yeah, yeah, Patrick Stewart's one of them for sure. I had a trouble thinking of some yeah. examples for a moment. No, I'm not talking about like actors who do voice acting work. I'm talking about like, you know, it's either they underpay real voice actors or don't hire them at all or stunt hire people who have no business voice acting. Yeah. And I I don't know why, but Witch of Mercury really brought that to the forefront well, for me. And I'm going to give credit to Witch of Mercury. They didn't du- double up. Yeah, they, I don't think anyone... They didn't, period. There, there was no uh, Chris Sabat role yes. where he's playing Vegeta and Piccolo and Yamcha yep. and a few other characters. Although Chris Sabat did have a role in this show. He was Guel's father. Yep. And when he was calm, he sounded like Piccolo. And when he was angry, he sounded like Vegeta. Yep. That really stood out to me for the dub. <laughs> yep. Yeah, no, I, th- this show was great, mm-hmm. thoroughly enjoyable, and yeah, they they nailed what they needed to. Yeah, I liked it. A uh, great villain, too, Proxima Mercury, definitely turned things on their head a little bit at first, because mm-hmm. you think, oh, the mask character isn't going to be evil, but then you're like, no, we should have known better. The mask character in Gundam's always, a, always an asshole. Yep. Um, no, it, it's just a fantastic show. Great depth of character, great villain, great uh, cast overall. Impeccably animated. Great plot. My s- new second favorite Gundam show, and it's a close second too, uh, because before my favorite was G Gundam, and then Gundam Wing was like a 
distant second. Yeah. Only because I have nostalgia for Gundam mm-hmm. Wing as the first real Gundam show on this side of the pond to really hit it off. It's kind of like how our Power Rangers are not the first incarnation of Super Sentai. It's actually a fourth or fifth generation. Yeah. But because they were the first to hit it big here, we view them as the originals, yeah. right? That's how we look at Gundam Wing. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm the same way. Like, Gundam Wing was always my favorite Gundam, but I will never rewatch it. Because I know if I go back and I rewatch it, it is not going to hit the same as it did back when I watched it. Yeah, I I think I'd like to see moments of it. Like, fucking Hero Yui tearing up the invitation. Yeah. Going up to really The highlights. Like, I'll kill you. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there are highlights, don't get me wrong. But... Overall, not a show I want to rewatch. Yeah, I, but I, I, I can't hate it. There are some other Gundam shows I'd like to watch that I heard good things. I heard good things about Turn A Gundam. Yeah. Uh, I heard good things about uh, Iron Blooded Orphans. Um, and I heard good things about Gundam Unicorn, except I absolutely hate the villain's name in it. What is it? It's He's a clone of Char, and his name, I shit you not, is Full Frontal. Okay, that isn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. I thought you were going to say it was Char. <laughs> Char as Babel. <laughs> we'll do Star Trek clone naming. <laughs> Only the ex- my, expanded. My name is Genocide Holocaust. <laughs> but call me Gene. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Christ. Oh, and we- now I want to see... <laughs> I want to see the show where the vic- the villain is named Genocide Hanuk- Holocaust. I like, can't even say it. Like, that would be like a Bionic Commando 3 bad guy name. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> it's got just all the old Shinkiro art he's pointing at you. It's like, you're going to pay Genocide Holocaust. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, Capcom did say they're going to announce a big game for next year. Maybe it'll be Bionic Commando 3. That game series is dead. Anyway, no, this show was spectacular. I really enjoyed it. And I hope we get more like this rather than what we've got in the past. No Gundam Seed, please. Fuck that show. Yeah. No Shars Counterattack. Garbage movie. Folks, what did you think of Mobile Suit Gundam Witch for Mercury? Let us know in the comments or let us know on our website, uh, twofatguystalk.com, leave us a voicemail. You can also get there at AnimeRave.xyz, home of Carlos Dave Anime Rave. Us. Look for more releases. Soon. So soon. <laughs> so close. Tune in next time, everyone.